the Brewmaster's Table by Garrett Oliver. There's no more romantic book about beer to me uh, that just like inspires you to want to drink beer and to learn more about beer. The way he talks about beer history and styles um, is, is really cool. And giving, mo- and giving examples of them and, and some tasting notes and food pairings with those. Uh, it, it's That was one of the original books I read that got me super psyched on beer. And that was Tim from Cellar Maker Brewing Company on this week's episode of Brew Roots. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Brew Roots, where we tell the stories behind your favorite beer. This is Sound Guy Ryan, and joining me, as always, is Erica and Matt. And we got an awesome episode 142 with you with Cellar Maker Brewing Company. Yeah, Ryan, that was a cool little rhyme scheme. Wasn't I it? liked it. I it tried cute. really hard, but I don't know if it worked or not. No, it definitely worked. I Great. don't know if that is directly attributed to the beer that we are drinking right now. Um, we were lucky enough to get a... A pseudo care package from our friends over at Sylvaticus. Yeah, it's so some really cool news with Sylvaticus. They're kind of changing their uh, packaging format. So in four packs right now, and that's right, you heard me right. It's four packs. 69 good. Right now. Yeah, right now. So they have their Doppelbach in a four pack. They got their Why Not in a four pack. And then they also got their Quintessential uh, Pilsner in a four pack. And then in bottles... Matt, what and that we was got? Tim from yeah, Cellar so Maker the, Brewing Company. The beer that we are drinking on this right week's now episode is their of uh, dry and effervescent, effervescent farmhouse style um, beer called Apropos, and it's a saison. Uh, yeah, we, we, it's 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 it it's slaps. solid. It slaps. And I it's really, it's really, really, I really, really like it. Yeah, and uh, the one I wanted to try, but everyone was like, we already had peach earlier. Uh, was the Pomerarius, and it's their peach. Their peche. The peche. Um, we'll yeah. have that next time. That's uh, aged in a in a wine barrel, and yeah, that's that's gonna be awesome. I guarantee. But uh, it's funny they Sylvaticus their um their Oktoberfest was in a in a can, and I was like, holy shit, they they have a can. Uh, Oktoberfest, yeah. and that was really good. Right around there, their three-year anniversary. So it's exciting to see them canning now. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. And I, you know, I, I, we have to interview Sylvaticus again because their story has changed a little bit since we first interviewed them. And yeah, just, you guys interviewed them more than a year ago, right? Way more like than two a year. years. Oh, yeah, Ryan and you were even lot part has of it. Changed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I remember them saying like, yeah, they were doing the crawlers, and they. They didn't say never, but I mean, I wasn't. I, if I was to put money on it, I wouldn't think a four pack, was sixty now four pack yeah. would uh, would happen. But yeah, well, the thing with Sylvaticus, and you know, it kind of, it kind of makes me upset, is that a lot of people don't really know about them. I know, you it's know, like, I'm always like, have you had Sylvaticus? And people gem. are like, if that's what I tell everyone I talk to, even the people you know at the brewery. I'm like, like no, literally you, everyone. He just walks up to people like, and he tells them. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, but I, you know, I, I've had conversations with. With some of the employees there and i'm like you know you guys are hidden gem like not a lot of people know about you you know i've talked to plenty of people and i tell them about sylvaticus and they're like huh uh-huh. yeah yeah and, and honestly- i'm like what what that's so good like how do you yeah. not know about sylvaticus and you know as soon as the word gets out there that this beer is that good we're They're fucked gonna be we're fucked we're never gonna get it i know oh, well that's the you know that's the sad part is that we might not be able to get it because of how small they are um, but I'd be super happy for them. And they have a beautiful tap room. Like, oh, gorgeous. Honestly, like I love going to their tap room when it was able, when you're able to. Well, yeah, we have a great episode for us, um, but we also have an awesome announcement. Um, if you listen to our last episode, which was two weeks ago, we had the Thanksgiving holiday, and I think we're still recovering from that. A lot of beer and a lot of food. Oh, for sure. Um, we did a beer advent calendar, so surprise! We, and it is awesome. We so a- we actually did it, um, and our our winner, if you follow us on social media at Brewers across everything, uh, was the underscore Hopstop, uh, our friend Emily. Yeah, she's great. She's great. I mean, honestly, we tr- we did this five times. Yeah, she won every time. Yeah, we did because like we were like, oh, she can't. She like. We we were like no she we went were, hard yeah we were like <laughs> I, we wanted to give it fair she yeah. had the most entries for sure she did and she like, did we, we appreciate everyone that entered so I just want to let you know every, every she this won was five not times biased I promise she won five times in a row um, <laughs> which is crazy which is crazy um, so yeah so you deserve it the beer advent calendar we have so far we have done channel marker 
And on today day one, we, we did, did Gilded Skull. Well, not today. Well, it's technically day two. It's, day two. It's Wednesday. Yep. Um, then coming up is Henniker. And then when this episode is released, you will be hearing about Navigation Spear. Yeah. Um, so stay up to date with us on social media because we are doing 24 different beers up at, leading up till Christmas. We're posting it. I'm sure Emily will be posting it yeah, every day. Absolutely. And then... You know, we'll also be doing something else, I think, later this week. That's month. right. Um, we were super humbled by all the breweries that that reached out and said they wanted to take part in this because the this wasn't a giveaway just to get, get followers on our end. It was a giveaway to, to promote local breweries. And I think all the breweries realized sure. that um, it's our mission first and foremost to promote the breweries like – it's awesome when people follow us as well, but it was great to see that people sharing with us. My phone at one point was just vibrating Blowing up. 15 minutes straight <laughs> yeah. with people following and, and screenshotting it. So seeing that other breweries were part of it was really, really great. And, exactly. Uh, um, and because of that. We are going to actually do a 12 Days of Christmas um, giveaway. And I yeah. think we might. Are we going to do two giveaways or are we just doing one? I think. You know, we'll what? say one for now. Yeah. Maybe we'll do two. Yeah. You'll lot. have to find out. We we'll got a see. lot of beer. And we have so We're going to do another beer. one. Just stop it. Just tell them we're going to do another we're, we're, one. No, we're, we are. Definitely, we're just deciding we just if it's going to be one or two. You know, exactly. like, do we do two 12 days of Christmas? Or is it just one 12 days of Christmas? Yeah, who knows? But uh, just stay tuned. Give us a follow. Follow all these amazing breweries. Yeah. Um, and we'll let you know. But we have 156 beers to choose from, so we'll figure it out. Oh, somehow. my God, yeah. <laughs> um, but again, uh, congratulations to the underscore hopstot on Instagram, our friend Emily. Go follow her. Uh, she's doing some awesome stuff on, on social media. Um, she really loves all the local brewers. Yeah, she too, really so. loves and that's And that's awesome. That's what we're all about. That's what she's about. Yeah, we'll need to catch up with her and have a beer with her. Definitely, uh, definitely. I'm lucky. I'm gonna be meeting up with her soon time this week just to get uh, the beer in her hands. Excellent. Um, yeah. So I did want to take a moment out of the day to thank everyone who's listened so far. Uh, I'm sure if you are on any sort of social media, you've seen your friends posting what they've listened to all year on Spotify. I know I have. Yeah, we and had a couple people who were like Brew Roots, Brew Roots was number one. Their number one listened to podcast, and I, I just want to thank everyone who has super humbling listened to this podcast for nine hundred minutes during a year, fifteen hundred minutes during a year. Thank you. I don't think I've even listened to right? that many uh, <laughs> minutes of the podcast. Which, Seriously, um, Ryan has. Uh, Ryan, I was about to say I probably listened to that and more and more. because yeah. I have to keep like backing up when Erica laughs at yeah. and I have to get that laugh sounding right. But um, yeah, getting those. You guys uh, love my laugh. Come on, getting those tags on various social medias or just friends sending it to me was was awesome. So I, yeah. I do appreciate everyone who's done that, and uh, yeah. Uh, let's get to some news because people don't want to hear us blab. Yeah, no, that's, like, that's what's going on right that. now. So, pink boots. Yep. Um, just a reminder: don't forget to get your pink boots hop blend in for the next pink boots collab beer. Um, yep. You do have to order that by December fifteenth. That's right. So, um, just visit their website. Easy to order through them. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be a homebrew blend out as well at some point. I don't know if you can pre-order that yet. I assume that's probably going to be an order once um, that's done. But anyways, yeah, make sure you do that. Yeah. In other news, a uh, huge shout out birthday celebration to our friend ba -da -ba -da -ba -da! Bob from the Mass Brew Bros. We Bob. love the Mass Brew Bros. Uh, you can stay up to date. Uh, we found out about like three new breweries opening this week just because of following them. And we cannot wait to get them on a, on the show. So. They're more up to date than we are, yeah. which is pretty amazing. No, hats off to them. Yeah. They kick ass. Yeah. Um, but happy birthday, Big Pride. We love you. You are an, a completely amazing person in the beer industry. And we love what you and Rob are doing with the mass brew bros so cheers to you i'm gonna chug a beer for that because that's what we're gonna do you deserve do. it that's what we deserve <laughs> yeah um brian you got anything else buddy negative ghost rider i think we're ready to go into the cellar maker brewing episode all right so all right. before we take this episode into hyperspace uh cheers cheers, cheers. all right everyone we are here at small pond studios but we are virtually connected with our friend Tim from Cellar Maker Brewing Company in San Francisco, California. Whoa! What's up? What's up? I love I love San Francisco. That's like one of the only areas I like in California. I've been there once. <laughs> and that's not to Such knock a big state. Yeah, that's not to <laughs> knock the other areas. It's just I've only been to San Francisco, so I can say I like that one the best. Right. 
and it's, it's a beautiful the, city. And it's the home Indeed. of Rice Aroni, which is <laughs> fun facts. Oh. It's the main reason I moved here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we figured. We figured. Um, and we're here with Tim, and you are uh, based upon the website. You have some pretty cool roles, but I want you to tell our listeners your role at the brewery and your first memory of beer. Uh, I am one of the co-founders of Cellar Maker Brewing. Uh, I call myself the director of brewing and blending here. Um, so I don't do much brewing or blending, but I, uh, you know, figure out all these projects and uh, hand them down to my guys who uh, are the real hard workers here. Um, and uh, yeah, every beer here pretty much touches my hands or lips. Most of the recipes are written by myself. Um, uh, you know, it's a big, it's a team operation, but I definitely steer the ship here. Um, and my first memory of beer is, well, I mean, my brother's quite a few years older than me. So he, uh, he's like, he was at that time, like kind of one of those fishy uh, tour guys and uh, very hippie type of person. And, uh, you know, f- for being whatever he was, 21, 22 years old, he w- would have these parties where he would actually invite me along once in a while and all his friends would have like uh, a craft beer in the fridge instead of going to like a frat party where it might be something, you know, light. Um, so my first memories of beer really are like drinking beer with him and those beers were like, and I'm from New England, so Magic Hat, Shipyard, uh, nice. Ipswich Ale, um d- drinking those like really earthy beers uh it's like kind of my first time great um, intro beers get... yeah for, <laughs> i mean it, at the time i thought they tasted like crap but i definitely <laughs> developed a palate for it real fast right, right. that's uh, awesome did you find yourself wanting to go to school for beer or what did you do originally um beer wasn't even really on my mind as a profession uh until after college really um i was Home brewing in college. Uh, I went to music school. Uh, I, I was a musician at the time. I don't really play any much anymore, unfortunately. But um, I, uh, I was home brewing with some friends. I was definitely drinking plenty of local craft beer. Um, and I happened to get a job after college giving tours at Sam Adams down in Jamaica Plain. Um, and that was kind of pretty quickly after that, I started thinking like, oh, wow, this would be a really great career path for me. Um, it just made sense to me in so many ways. Yeah. Very cool. So going back to the homebrewing, when did you get the homebrew bug? And kind of how did you get that? And where were you getting uh, your supplies knowing where you grew up? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, well, that was – I had had interest in homebrewing, but, I, you know, I probably like most people, I found a friend who also liked craft beer, and he had been homebrewing with his older brothers, and he got me into it. And there was a spot in – now you're going to really test me. Uh, I want to say maybe it was in Brookline that sold some stuff. Uh, I will never remember the name of it. Um, but oh. they had some basic stuff, and we would grab it from them and buy some dead yeast that would hardly ferment. And uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Yeah, we just started doing it in the kitchen like most people. Very cool. Very cool. How long were you homebrewing before you kind of realized, like, hey, I think I want to do this? As a job, or yeah. Career. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think the home brewing definitely helped, but it was really working at Sam Adams, and uh, you know, they had a bookshelf there that was full of technical books that I could take home and read. Uh, drinking, you know, great craft beer every day, and and talking to very skilled brewers almost every day about the product, and um, you know, romanticizing it to patrons on the tours. All these things kind of just like. You know, you, you catch the bug, you really start thinking about it, and you develop a passion. And I, I think within a few months, maybe three or four months, I, I knew that I wanted to work in a brewery. Um, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Um, at that time, what year was this for you? And had the mass beer scene kind of taken off like it is now? Or was that why you made it out west? Uh, so this would have been 2007 and 2008. Uh, no, you know, I, it's amazing what the scene's done out there since I've left, because I left shortly after that. It was like 2009. I came out. Do you think that's why it got better? Um, No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) 
There, he's gone. Okay, yes. let's start with that. I mean, I think the seeds were all, all planted there uh, at that time, um, and uh, yeah, like I, man, I think back to that. If like you know Hill Farmstead and and uh, Treehouse and Trillium and Bissell Brothers, like I mean, I, you name any of those amazing breweries that there were even you know uh, months in, I probably would have thought twice about it. But um, the scene then was. Uh, you know, they, they had amazing, like, English-inspired inspired ales and some great lagers around. Um, but, like, most people, I, you know, definitely was interested in hops and IPA. And uh, a few of the brewers at St. Adams were from the, the Bay Area. And they said, man, you know, there's, you know, there's 60 breweries in New England and there's 60 breweries just in the Bay Area around San Francisco. Like, the, you, if you go out there... Back then, yeah, yeah a decade ago. Cool. So they're like, you'll get a job somewhere. Yeah. And with our recommendation, you know, we, we, we have some spots in mind. Um, so it seemed like a risk because I didn't really have a good plan. Um, uh, but I, I knew that I could probably land a job somewhere. And that's what I want to do, just work my way up. So you didn't go out west chasing the music dream. You, kept, you went out chasing the brewing dream. Absolutely, yeah. Wow, good Very for you, cool. man. Uh, so where did you cut your teeth? Where did you you uh, Where did you land first? Yeah. Uh came out and uh I was lucky enough to get a job after a month or two at Marin Brewing Company, which is out here known really well, but um uh, maybe not have like uh fame across America, mm-hmm. although they've won, you know, a, a bajillion GBF awards and whatnot. Um uh, Arnie Johnson, who's the brewmaster there for many years now, is an amazing brewer and uh it was such a perfect spot for me to land because it's um it's a little old school it's gritty the beers are amazing and like you learn everything you you know you scrubbing floors you learn how to clean tanks you learn how to filter you learn at some point you know if you show you that you're doing what you're doing right you learn how to brew um you're slugging bags of grain it's like the real experience you know nice. and like mm. a, a part of me was kind of thinking i was going to come out here and maybe try to get into uh university of california davis to do a brewing program there. Um, cause I, you know, I just graduated college not long ago and I was like, oh, I can go do that yeah. again. Um, but I didn't get in, um, which is great because I think there is no, <laughs> really no better way in the brew scene to like really learn than to actually just do it. Yeah. Now at this brewery, is this where you met your other co-founder for, for uh filmmaker or where did you got you and it's Connor, correct? Connor and my wife, Kelly. Yep. Uh, yeah, we, so Kelly was a longtime manager and bartender at Marin. Um, very, very, uh, like astute at front of house stuff. Uh, and then Connor came along a few years after I got hired and he was, uh, he was a server. Um, but the, the really one of the main reasons he got a job there is because Marin has a really great reputation and he wanted to see how like, a brewery from kind of top to bottom works, so a successful brewery. Uh, so he's kind of like serving tables, but also like really internalizing what was going on at Marin. Um, and he, he had already known at that point, you know, whatever it is, 2011, that he wanted to open up a brewery. Um, he was the guy who kind of spearheaded this whole thing and then, you know, contacted me and, and Kelly and brought us along with him. Um, so is he so a yeah, brewer? Yeah, we, we all met there. Sorry, so was he the brewer or were <laughs> you kind of the brewer to start out? Uh, no, Connor's not a brewer. Okay. Uh, yeah, he definitely had some really good home brews, probably better than my home brews. <laughs> uh, I've never been a good home brewer, but, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm the, uh, original brewer. Cool. Mm-hmm. cool. Did you ever think that, like, where did you get this entrepreneurial spirit to open a brewery, especially in 2011, where there was already 60 in the Bay area and 60 seems like a huge number, but now it's what, 220, no, it's... what, you know? <laughs> I, I don't know what it's up to now, but yeah. it's probably, I would say at least 150, yeah. something like wow. that. But 60 seems like a lot back in 2011, 2012. What made you guys want to be 61, 62, 65, whatever it was? Well, that for sure. You're absolutely right. Uh, it, it did seem like a lot, but then we would look at uh, like the San Diego County breweries, which was at like at that time, like 100, 110 oh, and, and, and being successful. Uh, even like the shitty ones were successful, you know, yeah. it's like, what's going on down here? Wow. People are just gobbling up this beer. Uh, so 
we thought that there's probably it wasn't oversaturated and especially san francisco we were the first brewery to open in san francisco in like seven years or something oh, wow. like that wow. um and we were actually the first of the like brewery tasting room only model we were the You're first like non-brew age. pub yeah 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 and so um we we're just like wow nothing's you know there's some great breweries in san francisco but uh you know i think we could definitely fit a couple more here you yeah. know so yeah yeah um did some research on you guys and in, in a huge uh i guess like someone that you guys looked up to was russian river absolutely and, and uh and you guys mentioned uh like hill farmstead as well um why were those two kind of the business models obviously russian river is pretty obvious and hill hill farmstead is pretty <laughs> obvious but not in 2013 um, you know, when you guys are opening, you know, he'll, he'll, what was the motivation with those two breweries? I mean, it, you're right. They're, we're talking about two of the best breweries in the world. Um, and, uh, you know, I, Russian River uh, has just always made fantastic beers top to bottom no matter what they make um but of course like they're really really well known for plenty of the elder and their hoppy beers um and no one up here uh i felt like was executing beer at that level uh on the hoppy side of things there was definitely i mean you know drake's was doing great stuff and um uh, roger davis who is at who's at faction now who opened up faction was doing great stuff like that at triple rock um but in san francisco like i don't i don't think anyone was really like making amazing ipa um and so we just we just wanted to like be that brewery and we we wanted to do a lot more mixed culture stuff so that's where the hill farm state kind of comes in i was like wow sean was making these amazing saisons and fruited sours and yeah, their beer is um, amazing yeah yeah, and so we wanted to be. We also wanted to do that. Of course, you want to do everything, right? Like right. Uh, that's pretty lofty goals. But like as a twenty, you know, whatever I was, twenty seven, twenty eight year old, I that's what I, you know, I thought I could do everything. Um, but really, the the hops game took over first, and we got some notoriety for that. And um, the mixed culture stuff kind of came later. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, Vinny at Russian River has always been a huge influence. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd never tried any beer like that until I moved out here. There was nothing like Pliny the Elder on the East Coast that I knew of. Yeah, absolutely. So now, when exactly um, did you open? Uh, 2013. September 2013 was the first brew, and then we opened up in October. Awesome, wow. awesome. What was the first brew for you guys? First brew uh, was a porter. It was like a, what Not I thought was going to be like a. IPA? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was always uh, told that like it's good to maybe start with a dark beer because like it's a li- maybe a little bit more forgiving on uh, you know some of the numbers that can kind of go awry. Okay, that's a good um, idea. You know, so that gave us like you know it's just that first one. Like I thought it was going to be this kind of bigger seven percent porter and end up being like four point three percent session <laughs> porter, um, which nice. is very enlightening. And I learned a lot just from that. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. And it actually is a really great beer. If you like uh, session porters, it, it's still one that we make once in a while. Oh, that's cool. Um, called nice. batch one porter. Cool. Um, <laughs> and then funny, we quickly moved on to the hops. It's a good name for that. Yeah. So now um, your focus on hops again, like that seems to be a thing for you guys. You pick them out every year is that what i heard you like you go to the top selection yeah yeah is that yeah, different we, than what other breweries do i guess i don't know a whole lot about that uh it's you it's, it's like a certain once you get to a certain scale uh you can start to do it uh the hop companies if they if they allowed every brewery to go up to yakima or wherever to um select hops i mean they'd just be inundated with so many so many breweries yeah uh, i mean they already are to a certain extent um and it's all over like this six week period so you know you go there <laughs> at, near the end of that and everyone is are like they're cross-eyed and <laughs> they look like they haven't slept yeah because a lot yeah. of times they're out they're out drinking with the brewers too right. you know because they 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 love hanging out with us and we love hanging out with them uh, and they get run pretty ragged um That's too but funny. yeah uh we we finally reached a size where uh, we could buy enough hops to get us access to go up there. And basically selection is like, you know, let's just take Citra. They'll put 
what they call uh, a few lots of citra in front of you. And these lots are like cuttings from a big bale of hops that comes from like maybe an acre over here. And the next one comes from a few acres over there. And you smell through them and you pick your favorite. It's kind of Fun. really simple and straightforward. Fun. Yeah. Nice. And how long have you been doing that for now? Uh, we first did it in 2015, maybe 2016. Oh, wow. Sweet. Yeah, well, we, we found a great company called Hollingberry and & Son, and they they don't have the, like, large requirements of poundage that you need to buy that, than some of the bigger companies do. Yeah. Um, and so they, they're really great uh, people over there. They let us come in, and, and instead of, like, the 5,000 pounds that you have to buy from um, some purveyors, they yep. were like, oh, you, you want to get 500 pounds? Cool, yeah, come hang out and do it. And that was... That was amazing that they even let us in there. Very That's cool. really cool. Nice. Uh, I just want to backtrack a little bit. What uh, size system did you guys start on uh, when you guys first opened your doors? We're still on the same system. Oh, it's, wow. Uh, Congrats. Yeah. T- <laughs> ten barrel system. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. It's not big. It's actually super inefficient, like pub system. Yeah. I, we never thought we were going to like be popular <laughs> you know i thought, Shit, I thought we it, actually made it <laughs> yeah you know like looking back i was pretty i don't know if i was naive i just um you know we're getting marin i'm we i designed a system that's like pretty similar to that and that is a brew pub and um there's just like i never worked in a production facility so i didn't know that certain things would not work out for us as well and over over time just like yeah. you know like things small things like having hot water you know, like you don't think too much about that, but like, yeah, you, you got to have hot, a lot of hot water to brew and clean and mm. do all these things. So we run a pretty like long brew day for two brew days. It's pretty much like two seven hour days where like wow. in that yeah. amount of time, some of these bigger breweries are knocking out like eight brews. Right. You know? yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, for a new brewery starting in 2013, not a ton of resources being around. Brewing on a smaller system, did that make you guys better brewers because you had to brew more often? Uh, I, I would say so. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I just like brewing on a smaller system as it is. Just the, the I don't know, you're so much more involved. Yeah. It's less automation. Uh, we don't have like rakes in our mash ton, so every mash is hand uh, stirred with a paddle. And, nice. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think technically makes better beer per se but it makes you more in tune with the ingredients um and uh yeah i mean but again i if i could have done it over again i'd have a system that's twice as big and (laughs) if you've ever seen our brewery it's real. i mean this is like the quintessential city brewery it is so small in here and we're like really jam-packed with tanks uh and we always you know people come in and they're like Oh wow! I would have thought it was way bigger than this. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, it might get a little claustrophobic, but yeah. Um, For our listeners who aren't familiar with your your brewery, with us being a Massachusetts brewery, can you tell us some of the beers that you guys are more notable for, and kind of the styles that your brewery is known for? Uh, we are known for uh, definitely our hoppy beers. Um, IPA, double IPA. We really push pale ale here. We have a like a fairly highly dry hopped pale ale style um, that I think anyone else would call IPA. Many you know five, six, seven years ago. Yeah. Um, but you know, very aromatic, but like light, spritzy. A lot of times, very citrusy and super drinkable. Um, I think we've we've really pushed that onto our consumers, and and they've responded well, and they they love our pale ales. Um, we, uh, I think our dark beers are, are, are really tasty. Um, I think we've gotten more notoriety for those over the past year or two, especially like as um, some of our barrel-aged dark beers have started coming out more frequently. Um, and uh, our mixed culture program is the people who know about it are into it, but uh, I don't think we're like well known for that. So let's talk about that for a minute. Um, in such a small space, how do you deal with the whole mixed culture and barrel aged stuff? Do you just keep it all in the same place, or I mean, I know a lot of people like like to keep it separate just in case for cross contamination. If I had that luxury, I would. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but no, they're they're pretty much right up on top of each other. Yeah, um, and we 
luckily, knock on wood, haven't <laughs> seen any cross con contamination. I, I definitely get uh, the barrels tested to see yeah. what's going on in them. Um, and like we have a barley wine that we just put into bottle and nice. it's been in two different barrels. Uh, you know, it's like a double barrel aged and it's been in the warehouse for uh, over a year and a half. Wow. Cool. Um, and we just got it tested and they're completely clean. That's awesome. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Uh, from what I've heard and what I've gathered, um, obviously like, yeah, uh, the bacteria is in the air and they can like, get into your barrel. But a lot of times those infections come from the processing equipment like bottling and yeah. canning and, and, and brew hoses and things like right, that. You right, right. Very cool. Uh, one thing we noticed was that you guys do can, but you are also bottling a lot of your beer. Um, is that is there a reason behind your bottling some of your beer in a world of 16-ounce cans? Yeah, I, I guess it's kind of inevitable that it seems to me that things are just moving towards can, like, across the board. Uh, I see more and more barrel-aged stouts and sours in can yep. mm -hmm. um where i'm just like well maybe that's something we'll really have to think about but i don't know i've always thought that um beers that take a long time to produce and can age in the the um the the bottle or can if you if you will i think it belongs in a bottle i don't know it just looks sexier to me um uh it it's a little bit I feel like, I don't know, it's, I put my bottles onto a, um, you know, like a wine storage shelf and yeah. I think I'd look weird with some cans hanging out. <laughs> <on it. laughs> um, yeah. but uh, that's uh, whatever the consumer wants. Like we are open to it. Um, yeah. I, I don't want to be like bullish and stubborn about these things. Like, uh, we are a business and I will do whatever it takes <laughs> to sell my beer. Um, yeah. because especially in San Francisco, like we have high rent and lots of employees who we pay as well as we can and these things cost money um yeah. so if, if you're gonna buy the beer in the can more often than you are in the bottle then i'll do it do you have a canner there or a bottle system or do you have like someone come in and take care of that for you for the canning we were doing mobile canning but we yeah. just actually bought our own canning line Ooh, um congratulations and Congrats. thank you it's been uh it's been a ride i'll tell you that <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we got a guy who came out from, um, Cody manufacturing, who's the manufacturer of the system. Uh, Victor came out and installed it and trained us about four weeks ago. Thanks, Victor. Um, yeah, Victor's awesome. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of packaging in gen general. Like I, no I don't, one is. I, haven't I, don't, it. Yeah, I, don't, I love to can. But... Right. Like, I don't know who loves to like offload cans off a, a canning line. Like yeah. that's, it's, if you do, <laughs> then you might want to go talk to someone. Um, <laughs> but I, I've always been, uh, against it to, or at least personally, and just like, I didn't want to like, there's so many headaches with repair and, right. uh, you know, like, you know, it, it goes down and like if the mobile company, they handle it all and I don't have to worry about it. Um, of course we have like more control when it's our system and I can really dial things in. Uh, but I just hate those headaches that come with owning something technical like that. Mm, um, but we, we, the writing was on the wall. Uh, every drop we're brewing is going into the can right now. Wow. Um, so it makes perfect sense to own our own canning line. Right, right. Um, and, and as far as bottling goes, we uh, we just hand bottle. So sometimes those are pretty nice. long days Kinda of like literally school. one bottle at a time. <laughs> yeah, it's guys. not great. It's not great. Uh, I don't I don't think the staff likes it at all. Probably but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. but yeah, I mean, it's to buy something for that might be a little bit overkill right now yeah. just with the amount of output we have hmm. do you have any opinions on some of the beer trends going on right now we're seeing a lot of beers with uh milk sugar we're seeing a lot of beers with lactose uh fruit milk and sour sugar is lactose. sorry i meant that's my great yeah. call there thanks erica You're welcome yeah. i'm just just saying yeah. <laughs> just saying <laughs> um, but how are you feeling about those like fruited sours and all of those styles uh, I think at first I was a little caught off guard with like how quickly things uh, just shifted into that direction. Um, it took me a sec to, I, I consider myself kind of like new school and old school. So, uh, I, I, I go, it takes me a while to think about something and like be on board with it, but I tend to be on board with it in the end. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm all for it. Uh, whatever, 
whatever, wherever you can bring beer, like I love the exploration of it. Um, you know, add whatever you want to, to it. As long as you're not, uh, hurting anyone, I guess, as far as like, uh, I, I really think it's important to like report allergens on the cans and whatnot, but, uh, yeah, do whatever you want. Yeah. And before we get too far into this interview, we want to just hear a word from our awesome sponsors. Did you know that your favorite Massachusetts breweries use hops from a local family-owned hop farm right here in Massachusetts? Our friends over at Four Star Farms are there for you whether you're a commercial brewery or a small batch home brewer. Make sure to head over to their website today and get your hands on some of the best and freshest hops available locally. Cheers! Cheers. At our local homebrew shop, Beer and Wine Hobby, you can get everything you need to make beer, wine, cider, cheese, and more. Not sure where to start? They have knowledgeable staff there to help. Beer and Wine Hobby is family-owned and located in Danvers, Massachusetts. Visit their website, beer-wine.com, and use our promo code BRUTES for 10% off your online order today. Shirks on Tap is the box subscription service where you can get some of the dopest brewery t-shirts out there. I'm talking breweries from Dallas, San Diego, and even our home area of New England. And you might ask, how do I get my hands on some? To get your first box for $5, click the link below in our description, or head on over to our website, breweries.com. Remember, drink better beer, wear better shirts. So we are back. Um, so Tim, I'm curious on your opinion on hazy IPAs, obviously the New England style IPA, uh, kind of saturating the market. You know, every brewery needs to have a New England style IPA, it seems like these days, but, uh, opinions on those and are you a West coast guy versus a New England style guy? Uh, I guess that changes with time. I was really personally drinking a lot of the hazier stuff for a few years there. Um, but I find myself drinking a lot more West Coast clear IPA uh, the past like year. Um, uh, kind of like you're asking about trends and whatnot. Like uh, I'm just like so down with whatever anyone wants to create, um, cool. you know. And it's if, if it's not to my taste, like I don't care. Like uh, hazy IPA is a pretty wide category now, just because of that exploration. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, we do something here that we've kind of termed uh, West Coast hazy IPA. Uh, because it, uh, I would, it's definitely hazy IPA, but it straddles this West Coastness with a little more bitterness, and um, you know, it doesn't have any English ale yeast. It's the, the what they call the Chico yeast, which doesn't give off much ester aroma. Um, so you you don't really have any interference with what the hops are giving off. Um, it seems to me that a lot of people who do quote unquote New England. Uh, style hazy IPA are using some type of expressive yeast that gives off those esters um, and it makes, you know, like a really beautiful big aroma with lots of stone fruit or tropical fruit. Uh, but I, I feel like they get a little monotonous sometimes just mm. because that yeast does have a tendency to dominate. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, we let the hops do the talking yeah. uh, mostly. It's kind of like mixing yeah. like the old with the new kind of, you know, like you're taking. For sure. Yeah. So what kind of yeast do you use then on your IPAs to kind of let the hops dominate? So that's uh, that's the Chico yeast, oh, okay. uh, the, the, the White Labs 001. Mm, um, nice. we, use, we use it from a, a Giga yeast out here who's in yep. uh, near San Jose. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, that's our house yeast. So we do our hazy stuff with that. We do our clear stuff with that. Uh, cool. We do a lot of our dark beer with it. It's super versatile. Uh, it's hardy. Um I, you know, we mess around a little bit with some other yeast once in a while. Um, yeah, we do do like a Conan and uh, yeah. London Three nice. blends for some of those hazy beers. Um, but I mean, it's it's probably ninety five percent oh one. Yeah, very cool. You mentioned your hazy beers. Um, being a brewer yourself, are you still are you into the lagers and pilsners? Are you guys brewing any lagers and pilsners on site? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's hard for me to think of any brewers who don't want to just crush lager all the time. All um, day, all day. 
Yeah, uh, we do it. We, we brew lagers, uh, not as much as I'd like to. Um, again, like, uh, you know, <laughs> I was having this conversation the other day. It's like people clamor pretty loudly for lager. Like, yeah, you guys should make more Pilsner, man. I just love Pilsner. I'm like, I do too, bro. But when we do make it, you only buy like a four pack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Only a four pack? It's meant to be like crushed. Like, yeah. Come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? And so um, I'm just like, I, I make IPA and people buy three cases. Oh, um, it's, it, yeah. it's just, especially right now with what's going on in the world, like, uh, I, I don't, I can't take the chance of like, fulfilling my like artistic dream <laughs> to its fullest yeah. where right, I just have right. to like concentrate on keeping the doors open. Yeah. So what are you doing to keep the doors open right now? Uh, we're, we're brewing more than we've ever brewed. Wow. Uh, we're literally, I think That's we're on crazy. pace to surpass <laughs> our barrel age by about uh, 10%. Wow, uh, nice. from last year. Super, you nice. guys. That's yeah, awesome. Um, I mean, we're super focused. We're just we are cranking it out. I mean, the quality hasn't dipped in any way, and if anything, it's 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 tasting better than ever. Um, Sweet. But we, yeah, we um, we make a lot of IPA, a lot of double IPA, a lot of IPA, a lot of pale <laughs> ale. What sells, right? Um, so yeah, it is. Um, it's but, really easy. Uh, whatever we don't sell direct to consumer, um, you know, bar <laughs> bars, stores whatever we'll just take it right off our hands yeah. so um it, that's easy yeah with you guys being early adapters of the tap room only model uh, or selling through the tap room um and then seeing people kind of follow suit uh is that something that you guys have been helping out a lot of other breweries with or what's like the what's the collaboration scene like you know with helping out breweries with being an early uh, adopters of that model so uh, with our tasting room and then helping other breweries with their tasting rooms? Yeah, like just... our, is because you guys, you, you mentioned that a lot of people were doing the, the brew pub only model. And then yeah. you were one of the first breweries to do the tap room model. Yes. Um, and then you saw, I'm sure, a huge influx of other ones where were a lot of people coming to you asking those questions like, hey, how do you do this and be successful? Yeah, for sure. Um, I would say it shifted dramatically pretty quickly to this model around here. I mean, it's just uh, obviously like way less expensive to open up a tasting room than it does a restaurant, less staff. Um, so um, with Bay Area prices the way they are, it makes like complete sense to do it this way. Um, and we actually, our architect who designed, helped design our brewery, he got passed around like to maybe <laughs> 10 other breweries after us. That's awesome. Um, and, and we weren't the first person to use them actually, uh, first brewery to use them. Uh, Faction had used us, used Steve before us, and uh, I, I think Steve. Uh, it was funny because Steve actually was like part owner of a brewery at one point back oh, in the geez. '90s, and that brewery d uh, didn't make it. And I think that was like, you know, this little dream of his that just got like Aww. squished. Oh, and, he's, yeah. he, I, and talking to him over beers, you know, like you know, you go out with him and have a couple of beers, and then he would just open up and just be like, you know, you could see the pain in his eyes. <laughs> Anguish. So he's living this like <laughs> second life with designing breweries, and That's I think he's awesome. pretty stoked on all of it. That's um, pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't been to many breweries um, outside of California, so I don't know like if that model continues throughout the country. But uh, it is a, definitely a big one out here. Yeah, for sure. In our area, I know when you probably make it home, you see that model pretty successful out in here. Um, you guys are obviously the elephant in the room being COVID right now. Um, mm -hmm. You guys are only canned sales and, and growler fills at your brewery, but you guys have a pizza joint as well, right? Yes. Uh, so we started with the main brewery uh, on Howard Street, which we have, uh, let's see, we had for five years and then, I mean, we still have it, but uh, it, it took five years, and then we opened up the taste the, the pizza spot called Cellar Maker House of Pizza, um, and that is like a small little restaurant. It had a nano system for a while. We actually just got rid of it because it doesn't make sense to kind of brew these three barrel batches at this time. Yeah. Uh, it's just taking up room. Um, so yeah, we do like this kind of what we call Detroit or Detroit inspired style pizza. 
Uh, I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's like a deep dish pizza with like a cheese crust instead of a dough crust. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's super dope. decadent, super rich. That's amazing. Um, it's, yeah, it's like, you know, it's like stuffed crust pizza, but you're like, screw this crust, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just cut right to the cheese. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, That's but amazing. It's, it's been really rad. I mean, uh, who wouldn't want to like be part of a restaurant in the creative process of food? Like food is... Food is the ultimate in instant gratification um, of like uh, of production. So like you know, beer takes seven to whatever twenty one, twenty eight days yeah. to make. Where food is like this instant creation of flavor um, that, uh, and you can make this world of flavors. Obviously, like there's a whole supply chain that goes into that, and then that takes time. Right, right. But at the at the oven, at the the you know at the pan and, and the pots, like you're making something really delicious right away and um there's just so much inspiration and and uh so many different directions that you can go with food obviously so yeah. it's been a real real amazing experience uh running with that um do you ever have beer and in, in, in pizza pairing i was gonna say yeah. do the two play off each other at all <laughs> i mean we don't personally do i mean our staff is down <laughs> to recommend things but like yeah i i'm not a big beer dinner kind of guy like oh, yeah. I'm, i have fun at them but i i don't know i've just uh uh beer and food uh you know just give me a give me a damn ipa with everything or just kills me, you know? like, yeah. <laughs> whatever <laughs> yeah it's, i don't i don't think too much about that yeah, yeah yeah do you ever use beer um as an ingredient in your pizza at all not in the pizza uh we've done it in um some of the sauces for things mm-hmm. and whatnot um but we don't add it into like uh, like the dough or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, 2013, you guys opened. When did you guys kind of start seeing you guys taking some steam in the in the community and be, and getting some notoriety? Uh, probably took about eight months to a year, maybe. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, you just start to see the tasting room, have more and more people, more frequently, and. That's like, man, I miss that so much. Uh, yeah. Such an incredible experience. Just So our brewery, again, like very tiny. The brewery's in the back of the building. There's no back exit. You have to walk through our Jeez. tasting room. <laughs> and you have to walk through everyone yeah, in the tasting room. Because right? like, there's this kind of this straight shot to the door through everyone. Nice. Um, so like, uh, it, it definitely like hinders us during uh, production. But um, it, you, you, you walk out there and you see those smiling faces and... Uh, it, there's part of me that's like it's kind of nice just being able to operate and not have to worry about getting everything through the building before we open at three o'clock and all that but then just to not see our like really awesome customers uh, so many of them who've just like supported us for so long like um mm-hmm. that that is uh it has taken my has taken its toll on me a little bit personally yeah yeah it's taken its toll on a lot of breweries around here yeah for sure yeah um Talk about the beer scene in San Francisco. What is that area known for? I know our listeners have probably heard this in the East Brothers episode, but I, I want to hear what your perspective being an IPA yeah. forward brewery versus a <clears throat> lager and Pilsner forward brewery. Uh, man, I mean, you know, the Bay Area, you know, with breweries like Anchor um, and, you know, later Russian River and, and Drake's and, uh, I mean, Gordon beer. There's a lot of amazing beer out here. Like we're really spoiled, but we've been spoiled for so long that like, we don't even realize we're spoiled. Um, (laughs) there's like just this kind of like, we can get on that uh, for sure. (laughs) Yeah. There's just this kind of like insouciance, uh, like people, the beer scene is just part of many scenes here that are awesome, like outdoor sports, and the and sailing on the bay and the, the one of the best food scenes in the world and like uh, it's you can be the best brewery in the world and be in San Francisco and like you're not going to take everyone's money because they've got so many other things to spend it on. Um, yeah. It's it, we're we're really lucky because of that. Um, so like that that started really early on with amazing breweries like Anchor. Um, uh, and I, I think, I don't know, the proximity to Washington and Yakima really helped develop 
the hoppy beer scene out here pretty early on and yep. uh there's stalwarts of hoppy west coast ipa in the bay area and, and san diego that um just like you know redefined the style yep. um and uh now the a lot of you know breweries on the east coast have kind of redefined it again and definitely hopefully they'll kick it back to us and we can <laughs> take <laughs> yeah. over from there yeah hopefully I can have a random question. I, have, I had yeah. a random question oh, cool. too, but oh, go awesome. for it. Yeah. yeah, I'm cutting in. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite hop or any kind of hop right now that you are just really digging or something like that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think if you talk to a lot of brewers these days, uh, there's a hop called Strata that yeah. started coming out a few years ago from Indie Hops up in Oregon. Uh, and it's now being grown in Washington too. Uh, wow. it is, uh, it's a, it's an all-star, um, you know, and it's, it, you don't come across these hops that often. Uh, it is like just, I call it tangy. It's got this like weed okay. marijuana tanginess to it <laughs> that like just works and it works yeah. in West coast IPA. It works in hazy IPA. It just, is it, it very dank? Lot, uh, dank in the marijuana sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of breweries would say that's one of their top new IPA hops. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a big proponent of probably a lot of the same ones that everyone else loves. Like yeah. really, really good Citra, yeah, you know, sure. really good Nelson, really good mosaic. Uh, and I say really good because there's a lot of not so good versions yeah. of those hops out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it takes you a while to kind of figure that out as a brewer. Um, yeah. you just have to see it first to, understand it um and we're lucky enough to be around long enough to kind of figure out what we like and don't like of these hops all right well before we get into what's next for you guys i just want you guys to follow up with our sponsors because they have some really cool offerings right now so amazing shit going on i guess you could say shit going on so we'll take it away ryan cue up the sponsors Are you a solo artist, band, podcaster, or anyone else who needs recording services? Well, we got a place for you where your vision can become a reality. Welcome to Small Pond Studios, built by hand with heart and sweat equity by musicians for musicians. Go to smallpondstudios.io to reach out to get more information. And make sure you let them know that Barut sent you. Hey, Sound Guy Ryan here. Didn't know if you heard, but we're a part of the Hopped Up Network. There you'll find other informative podcasts about beer. So go ahead, follow them on social media, and visit them on their website, hoppedupnetwork.com, to learn more about the people, beer, and breweries from around the country. And until next time, thanks for listening. Cheers. All right, so we want to know what's kind of next for you guys. Any plans for expansion with your brew system? Are you happy with doing the 10 barrel? We definitely want to do something uh, further. Uh, I would, I'd love to start thinking about a, a larger brewery at some point, some type of production facility. Um, nothing crazy. Uh, we've never been, I mean, in, in seven years, we, the, the, our second spot you know, that we ever got is smaller than the first. Uh, which is very seller maker move. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so we're ready for to do something bigger, but not that much bigger. Um, you know, I again, hindsight being twenty twenty, like with COVID, staying small as we have, I think it's been a real uh, you know advantage, um, and being able to like again just control the beer really well and and sell uh, most of it direct to consumer, um, and 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 manage the size of our staff really well. Um, but, you know, I've been uh, working this ship for seven years and I'm ready to, uh, I, I think uh, my, the, the quality of beer coming out of here is, um, it's better, it's better than it's ever been. Uh, I'm really proud of it. I'm, pr- I'm more proud of it than ever. Um, you know, two, three years ago, I was proud of it then, obviously, but I just, I knew I wasn't there yet. Um, but I think I've reached a level uh, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but like I really, I really think our beer is, is spectacular, um, and we've got a great staff who, you know, works really hard to get it there. Um, so, 
uh, I want to bring it to more people. And, uh, uh, and you know, there's, there's other concerns too, like, uh, with expansion, obviously, like, uh, you're going into more wholesale and things like that Mm -hmm. and you get less money per ounce of beer. Uh, so you're working harder for less money and these things, but also, uh, hopefully that if you're selling all your beer, there is more money coming in and I can kind of like get more focused on, um, you know, I still like clean a toilet once in a while and run around constantly Good just covering so many That's different nice. bases. <laughs> I mean, we all are. We're, yeah, we're, we we are very much dark. multitaskers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'd like to be able to like just really focus on beer uh, and not think about a lot of these other things. Yeah. Um, you know, I help I help design all the labels. Um, I do all the social media, um, and I love doing that stuff, but. My passion is beer. It's not Instagram. Uh, so I would like to get <laughs> right, there. Right, right. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I'm sorry. Are you self-distributing then right now? It's like your local spots or? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we, we, we sell a good amount to direct to consumer. Yeah. Um, but but uh, we do do some wholesale to a few accounts in the area and then we'll ship some stuff down to San Diego or Portland, Seattle, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. I was gonna say, oh, Portland, man, that'd be cool. I always think that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People say Portland, like, oh, it's so <laughs> yeah, close. Yeah, That's Portland, awesome. Yeah, I know. It it's took like me that. a while to get used to that out here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so you guys, I mean, on Instagram, you guys have fifty-three thousand followers, oh, not right? That many. So I mean, yeah. you guys have quite the notoriety, <laughs> and not that Instagram is a good barometer of how many people are going to your brewery every weekend or every day, but. For, I don't think a lot of people realize the magnitude of people that are going to your brewery and how small scale you guys are. I think there's a lot of smoke and mirrors behind the scenes stuff that people just don't even realize. And it's it's kind of magical when you think about it. So that's really awesome to hear that you guys are kind of sticking to your guns, doing what you guys feel and, and doing it on a small scale. You guys just must have a billion bright tanks. Um. No, we actually <laughs> have a, a, a lot of fermenters yeah. that are like uni uni tanks, so we just okay. do everything yeah. in them. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot of work, and um, uh, we're churning it out pretty fast. Like, uh, there's one thing I don't like is like seeing people stand around not doing anything. Um, so I, I work my team pretty hard, um, sometimes too hard. <laughs> but uh yeah we we get a lot done in this space but like i said you have to yeah, yeah definitely good for you guys obviously with covid going on uh we're seeing a lot of people experimenting and i don't i don't know if that's just because people are interested but it seems like you guys are keeping to core brands any reason for that or is that just because it's important to keep your employees employed and working hard and sticking to your guns that yeah no you that's that's the reason Nailed um it. We um, I don't even need you here. I could just do the. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, we have like you know hop contracts that have yep. thousands of pounds of hops on there, and we need to use those hops. Yep. Um, so would like the core brands are made up of those hops. Um, uh, yeah, I mean experimentation is awesome when you can sell uh, a few barrels of that beer pint by pint right. to consumers and not really feel right. like you need to get it like rushed out there. Um, uh, that's not the world we live in now, uh, at least here. Um, yeah. Not for, we, yeah. we, we could probably do more of it, uh, to be honest, but, um, I don't know, man, you never know what's around the corner right now. Yeah. <sighs> yeah no changes week to week here. Oh yeah, like for sure. Yeah. So I want to get to know you a little bit more, Tim. Ooh. How are you? Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, so what are you drinking at home? What's in your fridge? Um, beer wise. I don't care about the bologna that's in your fridge that you haven't eaten. <laughs> it's growing mold. <laughs> I, I've, I've been drinking a lot of uh, West Coast IPA um, from us and, uh, you know, uh, kind of the same people that I always drink from because I'm, I don't get out much. Uh, you know, <laughs> faction brewing uh, from friends like uh, Bob Koontz down at Highland Park or Evan nice. Price at Green Cheek. Um, you know, whenever their loggers or West Coast IPAs come through, like I'm, I don't share as much as I should, um, <laughs> and I hold on to those. I drink a lot of wine uh, these right. days, um, wine great. just to break up the beer thing a little bit. But I'm still a majority beer drinker. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. For me, 
you know, the West Coast uh, hazy style, if you will, is a little more slender and drinkable. And I, I can drink a good amount of that stuff. Uh, but definitely modern beer has gone in a more sweet direction, which is just... It's hard it's to drink not, a whole pint of that. Yeah, it's yeah. not the beers yeah. I want to drink. They have four or five of. Right. Um, <laughs> you got to keep them a little lighter than that. Yeah. If you can drink four or five of those, kudos to you, man. Yeah. You're going to get diabetes. I'm blown <laughs> away. I'm blown away by some of you people out there. You guys crush double it's IPAs insane. like it's like no tomorrow, yes. man. Yes. There are a couple people that we know through Instagram that like make their, their life their loving their life on like chugging them i don't understand good for <laughs> you guys <laughs> I, i've converted they've converted me to a logger guy so yeah he's a recovering <laughs> hop head <laughs> he's a recovering <laughs> hop <head>. oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um i'm interested you, you being a uh, massachusetts um born and kind of raised uh do you have a fa- favorite massachusetts brewery uh let's see well New England okay. brewery Pre pre moving to the West Coast, uh, I drank uh, well. I drank a lot of Sam Adams because I worked there, and uh, I, I do think that some of their beers are underappreciated. Like I think Boston Lager is when it's on point, it is yeah. a really stellar beer. Um, oh, yeah. uh, Shipyard, I drank or not sorry, not Shipyard Ipswich. I drank a lot of Ipswich Ale. Um, we are, fun fact we are like five miles from ipswich brewing right now <laughs> oh really yeah, yeah i listened to their podcast with you guys oh, actually cool. that was fun mm-hmm. um they, yeah i mean there is no earthier spicier beer out there than that um and i i just i miss that because no one makes that out here really the english um, style yeah that kind of english gritty stuff um and yeah i mean magic hat was always big for me back then um but now uh uh, you know, uh, we're good friends with the people at Trillium. Uh, I love their beers. Um, my my former assistant brewer um, just he moved to, back to Maine some years ago, and, and he's at Batson River. Oh, uh, oh, cool! Yeah, Wade Banker Ritchie. He's an he's an amazing brewer, and uh, he was doing some really great stuff there. I wish I could drink more of his beers. Um, a little shout out to him. Um, but yeah, Bissell Brothers, they they're <laughs> killing it. They're yeah. doing some amazing stuff, sure. and and then. Of course, uh, Hill Farmstead. So, cool. you mentioned Trillium. Um, you guys planning on doing any collabs with them? Have you done an East to West Coast collab with a brewery? Uh, we did a beer with them uh, not too long ago uh, at their brewery called. Um, uh, oh man, I'm spacing hard right now. I'll think of it in a sec. Uh, but they they originally brewed with us and other half out here a beer called Juice Gymnastics, which is. Um, uh, double IPA, hazy double IPA that uh, people out here really enjoyed. Cool. Uh, we did a follow up at um, other half called Juice Ribbons, and we're actually planning on doing another follow up to all those back out here really soon. So people can look forward to that in the Stay coming months. Stay tuned. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Trillium's pretty good. I think their yeah, beer's all right. All right. Yeah, their beer's all right. <laughs> <laughs> You're into that guys, thing. Whatever, they're no blood. Those guys could, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they, they are so um, just involved with... They're, they're, they're so detail-oriented. Um, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. You, you know, you go there and you talk to them and, like... You're like, wow, you guys are heady motherfuckers. Like, yeah, you, you, you know they they yes. think about it all. They it's, did, it's great. Recently, they did a um, their black is beautiful um, stout, and it's like honestly the best one I had. They did a collaboration with with, with, with right? a brewery called White Lion, yep. and it's unbelievable. It's it like solid, so good. And just the the stuff they're doing, and they have like such a less notoriable like saison program and mm-hmm. and mixed culture yeah, program yeah, yeah. that like yeah anything bottled from them i had something bottled people don't know about it and yeah. it's really unfortunate because oh, yeah. it's amazing like i got a four dollar bottle of like something aged on malbec mm-hmm. and i was like this is amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> why isn't yeah. this 22 dollars <laughs> yeah please never make it because it's, a, cause it's <laughs> more available maybe yeah. right right yeah. right yeah absolutely um how do you feel about lines as a consumer obviously you probably love them as a brewer <laughs> but as a consumer what do you think about beer lines I mean, personally, I I don't wait in line for yeah. anything. Yeah, we don't Good need, for you. We don't yeah. either. But yeah. line. <laughs> don't make uh, this weird. <laughs> I'm not saying that's a good thing. Uh, it yeah. probably like excludes me from getting some really cool shit. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if people want to wait in line for my beer, like there's, um, I'm not gonna say there's no bigger honor, but like 
that 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 means a lot to me as a brewer. Yeah. You, you know, it, I'm I consider myself uh, uh, an artisan and maybe an artist. Um, and so when people appreciate your product, uh, that's like just the you know that's what I live for. Um, so that line is kind of that representation of that. Um, so it's cool to see. I welcome it. Any uh, books or beer readings you would highly recommend? Uh, if you want to like learn how to brew, maybe or just or whatever. Just Any beer. books that you've read about beer and the beer industry that yeah. you like, or like Harry Potter, if you like yeah. that one, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> you know, Fifty Shades. Harry I don't Potter. know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I mean uh, the uh, what's it called? The uh, Brewmaster's Table by Garrett Oliver. There's no more romantic book about beer to me. Uh, that okay. just like inspires you to want to drink beer and to learn more about beer. The way he talks about beer history and styles um, is, is is really cool. And giving mo- and giving examples of them and, and some tasting notes and food pairings with those. Uh, it, it's that was one of the original books I read that got me super psyched on beer. Um, and uh, from there, if you actually want to brew beer. Uh, what is it called? Greg Noonan's, uh, it's kind of outdated now, but Greg Noonan's uh, Brewing Lager Styles, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, just like super straightforward, um, you know, not too pedantic or anything. Like you can be, understand what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, being a musician, is there a point where the, there's a crossroad between music and brewing for you? Um, hmm. Yeah, I would say, I don't know. There's a certain... For me personally, this is not for everyone, but like for me, it's like this certain um, focus on on repetition that I, I really like. Uh, so like when I, I was a classical musician, so you would lock yourself in a room for like four to six hours and yep. uh, you would play like the same line of like, we're talking about like 20 seconds of music and you would just play it over and over and over and over again. And there's like something extremely zen about that and meditative. Um, I try to bring that to brewing a little mm-hmm. bit and try to find like meditative moments with it. Um, and, it, it, you know, I think people can get bored with brewing because really you're just kind of doing a lot of the same stuff over and over again. But for me, that's like the pleasure of it. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I draw that kind of connection. Yeah. Any guilty pleasure beer? Obviously, we're drinking Miller High Lives while we're interviewing you. <laughs> but uh, do you have a guilty pleasure beer? I don't. I don't see any guilt with any beer. Uh, I like that. It. Is yeah. the right answer, <laughs> That's my the friend? Best answer Congrats, sir. You, you won. We can't answer. We can't ask that question anymore. You cracked the code. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, is Nick Cage about to pop out or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Give yeah. me a high five. He has the declaration. <laughs> he did. Hackers, Nick Cage. So no beer, no guilty pleasure. He just said that. Uh, you know, I guess one <laughs> thing that I, I I kind of enjoy that I actually didn't really enjoy for a little bit, but like overly sour beers, <laughs> I All actually right. do like them. Right. Yeah. yeah, you know, a lot. Of, I think a lot of people get no. flack for that now. Like a lot yeah. of breweries, you know, it's like, yeah. oh, this is just you know battery acid. Yeah, yeah. I kind of enjoy yeah. it. I like it. Great time. <laughs> Great time. <laughs> it's such a fun experience. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, you've done some pretty cool collaborations, but do you have a dream collaboration? Dream collaboration? Uh, Underberg. Uh, if we could brew uh, an official Underberg beer. Do you guys know what Underberg is? Negative Ghost Rider. Sounds good. I think I do, but I, I already I already swung and missed on a hop, so I'm not going to. Yeah, I know. Well, there Underberg, it is. Totally. Underberg is a, it's a digestif uh, that is, it's like. 80 proof i think um oh and it, but it comes in this tiny little yeah. bottle that's probably like a half a shot or so right uh and but it's considered medicine uh by the government so you can actually like buy it in super uh, in like supermarkets or like uh you could go to the, the a restaurant that doesn't have a liquor license and they could sell, sell you 10 of these things you <laughs> get your buzz on with it but it's like really licorice anise yeah um and, and it just makes you feel good um and it's it's kind of a thing out here um we're really into it we sell it at our brewery um nice. so yeah oh, if man. we could figure out a way to work with those guys there it's a german company yeah, yeah. Um, right right That's awesome. uh they're they're, they're <laughs> i don't know we'll reach out now, to you. Said it, we'll, we'll now that i've said it you're gonna see people out there with like a, 
Underberg umbrella because they also do like what like weird Marlboro cigarettes used yeah. to do. Yeah, <laughs> and you can turn in the caps for all this merch. Yeah. Um, so I've got the placard behind me, as you guys can see, but <laughs> your audience obviously can't. Um, and That's... there's like little toy trucks and uh, and nice. uh, little glasses that fit one shot perfectly it's does it great. have any medicinal value to you or does it just get you fucked up no it's an apricot <laughs> kind of thing. It, it soothes your stomach after you ate like exactly 20 pounds so, yeah. of food yeah we always have one after a big meal yeah. and that's like the thing after a good meal right. is your slogan um but it's also like oh you've been having a real hard day all right underberg shop time <laughs> <laughs> awesome. you know what's gonna have to happen is if we send you some beer from out here you're gonna have to send us some Underberg from out there, because I I've never Absolutely. seen it. I've never seen it here. I mean, you? you could literally probably go to your local liquor store uh, if they are you know of some type of quality and find it. All right, we're gonna have to do that and just do a whole Challenge episode. Challenge accepted. On it. No. <laughs> um, does Jim Cook know that you own a brewery? <laughs> <laughs> That's my last question. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't know. I, I doubt it. I don't think he knows who I am. All right. All Aww. our listeners should tweet at Jim Cook and tell him. <laughs> that's awesome. That one of his tour so guides funny. opened a brewery. Yeah. That's Jim, Jim was awesome. He was he was a fun guy to work for. Um, oh, you have but, can uh, you give, you us, I, I, give us your best Jim yeah, story. Yeah, I mean, I probably talked to him like two times. Oh, yeah. Now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> So my question that I like to ask is, what would you like to learn more about as a brewer and as a business owner? Boom. Oh, um, as a brewer, oh man, I guess like for me right now is I wish we had more money in the piggy bank to buy like better equipment to dive deeper into the numbers of our beers. We just started doing that because... You know, there was no way I was buying a canning line without a dissolved oxygen meter to measure the oxygen in our beers, which right. is obviously like one of the number one yep. um, problems. Um, uh, so, like, I wish we had more bells and whistles like that. We've been, like I said, we've been rocking a pretty basic setup. Um, so, I think I've got the ingredient side of things down and I've got the process down. But, uh, man, if I could look a little closer at our beers, uh, we could just. I don't think there's like huge gains to make, but those small ones are still really important. Do you have um, a lab um, in your brewery? No, nothing like that. Um, so like we don't even have a microscope, which is something I've been meaning to buy for nice. a long time. Um, we got the dissolved oxygen meter and um, I send off our samples to be tested for different things. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would love to, we don't, we just don't have room for a lab. Yeah, either. no, I get it. Yeah. 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 Um, what was the other question? Uh, what would you like to learn more as a business owner? I don't, you know, luckily Connor uh, and Kelly kind of handle more of that stuff and I can just focus on the beer as much as I can. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if I want to learn more about <laughs> That's a good answer. I like it. What do you mean? You mean Best you don't, answer ever. You don't want to be an yeah. in Instagram influencer and learn all that stuff? Are you sure? Yeah, I guess that's the part I want to learn is yeah. how to get more likes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, We're still trying to figure that out. Yeah, it feels really good getting more likes. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, so we found out that Jim Cook doesn't know about you and... That's the best I part of the podcast. So. No, no, no. So. Um, but we really want to make sure that people go out and uh, find your liquid and enjoy it. So can you tell our listeners where they can find you physically and and virtually? Meta metaphysically? Metaphysically, yeah. In the subdivision. Um, I would say, well, your best bet is if you're in California, um, they're obviously like you can come to any of our breweries and buy beer at any point. Uh, we do do mail order across the state Ooh. of California. So if you live in California, Fancy. you can actually get our beer sent to your doorstep. Um, is that just as of COVID or has that always been a thing for California? That's a funny story. Uh, so we email when this all started happening, we emailed our um, our state lobbyist uh, and said, hey, because uh, California is awesome. We actually have like a lobbying group who fights for us. Um, and so we e emailed them and said, hey, do you think the control board, alcohol control board will uh, change the rules and let us mail beer so there's less contact? 
And they were like, oh, you've been allowed to do that for a little bit now. Oh, cool. Oh, and oh, I swear, I, I don't know <laughs> I don't know many breweries who actually knew that was a possibility. Probably um, not. I knew, I knew there was people doing it, but um, I thought it was like a special permit or something. Um, so, yeah, we, we mail a ton of beer to people now. That's super uh, cool. It's, it's probably like of the, the beer we sell direct to consumer, it's like... 60 or 70 percent wow holy cow good for that's you guys a lot massachusetts it's a lot of work notes. so that's another thing we're doing all the time i'm packaging up mail and <laughs> yeah ups <laughs> must love you or, or right. usps uh, yeah. yeah that's awesome um so yeah we can get mail order beer to you uh but if you're outside of the state uh there's not a real great way of doing it other than i guess trading for beer or something yeah, yeah. which we would never condone on this podcast right yeah <laughs> we would bootleg yeah that's illegal never, never. Uh, i don't I don't give a fuck anymore, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, true. We don't Rebels. either. Yeah. Um, and social media, where, where can we find you so people can... Stalk you. Stalk you, yeah. Because you run it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instagram is at Cellar Maker Brewing, and Twitter is at Cellar Maker Beer. Um, and then Facebook, just search for Cellar Maker Brewing yeah. Company. Very cool. Sweet. Cool. And last but not least, what are you most proud of? Uh, what am I most proud of? Mm. Uh, here at the brewery, I'm just proud of, um, I've, I've got, like I've, I've said it a couple times, I've got a really great team working for me. Um, uh, I think I've done a good job of hiring really like-minded people who um, love beer. And it's like a real pleasure to come to work every day with these guys because um, uh, they, they do what they're told, but they also inspire me. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. a good answer. Well, you just heard from Tim from Cellarmaker. And we really appreciate you doing this today with us yeah. because yeah. It's, it's not every day. Time. It's not every day, but it seems like it's been every other week that we get to talk to a California brewery. Yeah, lately I feel like we've talked to a lot of them and it's been great. Yeah. I like learning about that scene and uh if you guys out there in podcast land want to hear more from California breweries, let us know who to hit up and who, we'll do it. And we will. <laughs> um but you guys get to, won't get to hear this portion of the podcast but we're gonna chat with tim for a little bit more and chug some more spaghetti so and uh see ya, see ya. Spaghetti. <laughs> uh, until next week cheers cheers, cheers. All right, thank you everyone for listening to this episode featuring Cellar Maker Brewing Company out in California. We do really appreciate everyone taking the time out to do this episode, especially you, Tim, because I know your life is hectic, especially with all the COVID shit happening right now. But we wanted to thank all our listeners once again for listening. Um, and if we made it on your Spotify top uh, podcast list, that's awesome. And please share that. Let other people know about that because this is how we continue to grow this podcast. And we're growing, quite frankly, because of, of you, the listeners. And we really, really do appreciate that. Um, we are going to be doing some pretty cool things in the upcoming weeks. I know we have some merch in the in the forefront. And uh, you guys can find out about that merch by following us on social media at Brewers across all platforms. We also have a Patreon account that I know that we hype it and we have been terrible about that. But we're going to be better about that in 2021 because, let's face it, fuck 2020. But other than that, we have an awesome episode next week. Who do we have? Fort Hill. That's right. We have yeah. Fort Hill. Uh, we love Western Mass. Um, so we're heading back out there, buddy. back out to Western Mass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I just drank the rest of my Fort Hill. Yeehaw. Beer. Yeehaw. Yeah, what? That's, that's the Western Mass. That's thing, the Western right? Mass thing. <laughs> I thought it was like a dragon roar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, thank you once again, all the Brew Roots fans out there. We appreciate it more than you can even imagine. We'll catch you next week. Follow us on social media to stay up to date and find out what is next on our beer advent calendar. Dun, dun, dun. Cheers! Cheers!